Hello and welcome to a discipleship manual titled Believer's Bible Class. We're going to be studying together. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the introduction. Knowing Jesus and making him known. These lessons are designed to prepare a candidate for water baptism. This workbook follows the one-on-one -on -one New Life in Christ format and should lead to the Disciple Maker's Manual, The Authority of the Believer. This material is designed to be used by a mature Christian to help a newly committed Christian find his or her feet in the faith. This is a transferable concept which means this material can also be used by this person when he or she is more grounded in Christ to help establish the faith of another new believer. It is a structured and well-defined means of transferring our experience of Christ to others. The first um, passage it gives us here is uh, from the Great Commission uh, um, from Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 which reads, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. In this commission of our Lord, I'm sorry, if this commission of our Lord is to be carried out, the principle of evangelism, multiplication commended by Paul will have to become a reality in the church today. In his letter to Timothy, Paul said, What you have heard from me before many witnesses entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also, found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. This simple plan worked so effectively in the early church without printing, presses, radio, or television, or in this case, YouTube, <laughs> uh, to reach the masses. They multiplied greatly and filled the Roman Empire with the gospel message. To fulfill the Great Commission, we must get back to the New Testament pattern and act upon the Reformation message that all believers are called to be ministers. So for those of you who are um, considering this material for, uh, for your disciples or for your congregation, I'm going to go ahead and read how to use this uh, for follow-up. Um, for those of you who are just going to be um, who are on here to, to receive and to learn, then you don't have to apply this, but if you're um, considering maybe after you learn it, you want to you want to teach it, then this is also good to, to pay attention to. So it's titled How to Use This for Follow-Up. This workbook could be used by an individual or a one-to-one -one basis or in a group. So basically it's saying you can use it uh, to disciple somebody one-on-one -on -one to help them. That's what true discipleship is really is it's one-on-one -on -one, um, with somebody else helping and teaching them and training them and helping them mature in Christ or you could do it in a group setting um, in this case I'm, I'm doing it on YouTube uh, the purpose of each lesson is to discover what God's Word says to understand what it means and how to apply it to our lives if a counselor is involved, he or she should not do most of the talking. But in this case, I'm the only one talking, so hopefully um, I do a good job at reading, and you guys, so you guys can understand what what they're trying to um, to point out to us. So it says here that they should guide the discussion by skillfully using appropriate questions. Uh, remember, this is not a lecture, but a way to find out how far a person has come in their understanding of their new experience of Christ. Um, and I'm actually going to stop there and I'm going to share. And even for a lot of people, um, this is this is for me speaking, um, you know, a lot of people, they're, they're in such a rush and a hurry to, once they get, you know, born again and they receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and, and they actually it's really easy to get, you know, because there are people that are just barely being born again. They have the zeal, right? They, they, they've been forgiven of their sin and they want to go tell everybody about God forgiving their sin, but they don't have any fruit. Um, so they, they, they go on to ministry and um, there's no foundation. So, and then there's problems after that. You, you know, if, found, if your foundation isn't found on the rock and, and you, and you, 
you have to be tested and tried um, and show yourself approved before you go into ministry. And um, that's something by, from experience. I know that because um, I was one that years ago jumped into ministry and I found myself in error um, you know, just for many different reasons. So this, this material is to teach you and to build your, your character, build your relationship with Christ. And, and, and hopefully I could have a part, you know, that's, that's my, my, my prayer is that I would have a part in your, um, in your walk and have a part in your, uh, recovery or a part in your, um, your growing in your relationship with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, um, and, and learning and helping you build a foundation so that when the storms come, the trials come, you're able to stand firm. And, um, and then that's why I, my prayer would be as well that God would give, um, give us ears to hear what he's speaking to us so that we could apply it because that's, that's what this is about. What we just read is about learning what it is, how to apply it to our lives and how to teach it to others. So, um, so yeah, so some of us, what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is that some of us need, well, I needed to go back and rebuild my foundation. That's what I needed to do. Um, um, I'm a year in now, so even though I've been serving the Lord for most of my life, um, I had to go back and I had to build this foundation again because there was cracks in my foundation. So um, this is really good material. So I, I, I would, for sure, I would... Um, encourage you guys to stick this out um, stick these these classes and these these videos out so all right um, so here it says remember this is not a lecture but a way to find out how far a person has come in their understanding of their new experience of Christ and and to guide them into blessings such as the Lord's Supper um, water baptism and witnessing so uh, a lot of people, like I said, will be saying, oh, well, I already done, I've done all these things. Well, that's great. But um, as it says here, it says it's to guide them into the blessings such as the, so these are blessings. A lot of people, they don't understand that the Lord's Supper is a blessing to be able if the people, they just take it for granted and they just go and they just eat the bread and, and drink the drink the grape juice every Sunday and they ask for their sins to be forgiven. But then as soon as they get home, they're back in their sin. Um, and they, they don't understand the concept, or they or they go and they they take the they take the they take the bread and, and, and the and the juice, and they have unforgiveness in their hearts. And the word says that you, you when you do that, you're causing you can cause sickness in your body. There's things that um, if you're eating if you're eating his if you're eating the bread and drinking the grape juice the, um, the wrong way, and you're not being taught that you have to be. Yeah, you can't go and you can't do that without having. You can't, you can't take take and eat of him, eat of the Lord, um, without having forgiveness in your heart. You have to have forgiveness. You can't go in and still have grudges and regrets and uh, have have not regrets, but have resentment and anger towards somebody. You know, you have to forgive because that's the whole concept of eating the bread and, and taking the the grape juice is because you want. God to forgive you, uh, and, and you're saying thank you for His forgiveness, thank you for His blood, thank you for His 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 body, and if you're going into that and doing that, and you have unforgiveness towards somebody else, you're actually it says that there will be a curse will come upon you. Um, I actually, I'm not going to stray off off this teaching, but um, I can't remember exactly where it is, but um, it is in the Word. And um, actually, uh, I will share it for the sake of this video. I will look up on my phone where, where to find that at. Just give me one second. Eating the bread and taking the, drinking the blood out of context. Okay. Okay, here it is. So it's found in. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 27 says so then whoever eats the bread or actually here well, I'll look it up on here because I have Bible Gateway 1 Corinthians chapter 11 27 I'll put it in here here it 
here it is. So 1 Corinthians 11.27 says, uh, examine yourself. So whether whoever eats this bread Whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and, and blood of the Lord. I'll actually open up the um, the whole context, the whole text, and we could read uh, for eleven twenty-seven. So let me go down to it. Okay, here. So therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner. Will be, will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, right? And let so, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Um, so people, what's happening is, is in the church, people aren't being taught that they have to examine themselves before they eat um, and drink of the Lord. For he who eats and drinks, here it goes, in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment right here to himself not discerning the Lord's body for this reason many are weak and sick among you and many sleep for if we would judge ourselves we would not be judged um, but when we are judged we are ch chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world um, so there it is right there in the word it says for this reason many are weak and sick among you and many sleep or that means to many are they they many people uh you know if the bible says that we have to forgive to be forgiven so i mean this is you don't just you don't just eat eat of the lord uh eat of the body of the lord and drink of his blood without judging your heart and your motives and and, and forgiving and going into you can't you can't ask jesus for forgiveness unless you forgive those who have harmed you and persecuted the bible says that we have to pray for those who despitefully harm us and bless those who curse us so or vice versa um so with that being said um Go ahead and keep reading here. So, um, okay, so, so remember this is not a lecture, but a way to find out how far a person has come in their understanding of the Lord's, of their new experience of Christ, and to guide them into, into blessings such as the Lord's Supper. Um, okay, and then also into water baptism. So, and I'm going to share again. So, water baptism is not meant to, you're not meant to get baptized 50,000 times and unfortunately that's what's happened to me I've done that before in the past where I've gotten baptized over and over and over because I considered water baptism my it, it is a place of it's supposed to be a place of burial when you where you die to self and raised in Christ but I saw it as as a place where I could just always go back and get baptized again and, and he would just forgive me but 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 we're supposed to do it once and for all it's supposed to be a, it's supposed to be a one-time thing right we go down die in Christ raise in Christ and be a new creation the Bible says old things have passed away all things have become new so um, so now since I've learned this material that I'm teaching on here it's the revelation that's that's um, been given to the gentleman that's written written this material and through the Holy Spirit and through following the rules following the Bible says also that um, that we can be disqualified so I'm gonna talk I'm gonna find that right here in the Bible as well um, do not be disqualified Bible verse According to Bible.com, I treat my body hard and make it my slave so that I myself will not be disqualified after I have preached to others. There it is. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Here, let's look it up on here. Actually, I was thinking of another verse, but this is that's a good verse too. There's another one in Proverbs. But this is in 1st, uh, actually it's 1 Corinthians as well. 
1 Corinthians really needed uh, to hear this. There, there was a lot of, anyways, let's find it. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, let's read it together. Um, okay, so, but I, let's see, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I might, should be disqualified. So, um, we, water baptism, and also, hold on, I'm going to find another one, there's another one here, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, um, Actually, that's that's the main one, um, but like a race. The same as in a race, I don't want to be disqualified. Bible verse. Don't want to be disqualified from the race. Bible verse. Oh, here it is. Okay, yeah, so it's a, a different uh, text. It says... Um, So NIV, NIV says, uh, n n actually, let's look it up. 1 Corinthians 9.27, NIV, here it is. So it says, um, no, I strike, uh, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not, will not be disqualified for the prize. Um, oh, your NLT, I like the NLT. Um, See here. If I could find NLT, there it is. So first Corinthians 9:27, NLT says I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Um Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. So, let me go back up. Um, so, the reason why I'm, I'm sharing this is because water baptism is not, it doesn't seal the deal. It doesn't seal the deal, our salvation, it doesn't seal the deal on our salvation. It, it, what water baptism is, is it is a is it it's an outward expression to others that hey I'm 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 declaring before 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 my my brothers and sisters I'm declaring that I have made the decision to to honor cherish to to love God with all my heart mind soul and strength and then what happens is in Romans six it talks about here let me find let me show you here. So Romans 6 says, I'll show you what it says about baptism. So, um, well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Um, since we have, we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? So, bat water baptism is a... Um, it's a form of dying to sin. Okay, that that's how that's how um, that's why we have to be baptized. Um, the Bible says you must be baptized for the remission of your sins. It's an acts acts. Uh, uh, it says for the remission of your sins, and you and you sh and you shall receive the Holy Holy Ghost. Um, and that's in Acts twenty three. Let's see. Hold on one second. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of your sins. Bible verse. 
Acts chapter 2 verse 38-38. According to ESV.org, 38 And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So Acts 23, 38. Let's look at, let's, let's see it because um, I'll show you guys on here where it says about, so it says, uh, whoops, Acts, no, oh, Acts 2, I'm sorry, 238. Oh, Acts 238. So it says here, um, Peter replied, each one of you, um, must repent of your sins and turn to God, which is to believe in God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, um, I'll show you guys another another one is a New King James version of this. It says to believe. So here it goes. Repent. Then, then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the King James Version is the one that says repent and believe. But um, well, well, let me share it. Let me share it. Here it is. King James Version. Oh, it doesn't say believe. But it says repent. This is here. If um, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So to be baptized is to receive it, we're baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of our sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the baptism is for us to get to repent, which means to turn from our old way of thinking, and we're putting our new way of thinking, we're, our, we're putting our, our thoughts and our mind, in our, and we're subjecting our, our flesh to Jesus and his word and the word. And then when we get baptized in Jesus' name, we die in Christ, and then we come out of the water, and we're new in Christ. We're new, um, we're new creatures in Christ, and then we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit is is not so that we can continue in our sin. The gift is not to be, as we don't play with the gift. It's not a it's not a gift that we. It, uh, the, it, um, when we get baptized with the Holy, when we get the gift of the Holy Spirit, it's not a it's not a gift like a kid like a kid like a kid's like a gift that you give to a kid that plays. You don't play with you don't play with the Holy Spirit. It, it's not to be played and trampled on. It's and to be uh, thrown thrown aside when you're done with it. That's not what the that's not what the Holy Spirit is for. He um, and, and I'm going to share you share with you. Romans chapter 6 and what it talks about that So Romans 6 uh, Says well, we we're just reading it. It was this King James version. Okay, so here it goes So what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound so no God forbid how shall we that are dead to sin then live any longer therein. Um, know ye not that so many of us are as were baptized into Christ Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Now so for those of those of you who don't understand the and they language, I'll put it into uh, the New King James language where it's gonna make it sound a lot easier uh, for the sake of the Bible. Actually here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the message Bible because the message is very um, kind of like easier to understand so let's read it let's read the message so what do we do keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving I should hope not yeah we don't keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving that's not what his blood is for 
and that's that that's that's another reason why um, you know we have to be careful when we're we're taking the Lord's Supper or when we get baptized we have to understand and realize that if we're not adhering to to what the what the word says about baptism and Paul warning us about um, you know when watch I'm just gonna read so what so what do we do keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving I should hope not if we've left the country where sin is sovereign so if we've left the country where sin is sovereign so what that saying is is this is my first time reading it out of this con out of uh, the message so yeah so when you're in your sin when you're in the world uh, if certain things are normal it's it's really not sin to you to you it's not sin and it's that's why you keep doing it um, but when you accept Christ as your, as your as your Lord and Savior and you get baptized in Jesus name and you're taught the word before you you don't just show up one day to church and just get baptized and uh, it's, it's very I mean, you could do it but I wouldn't suggest it I, I would suggest that that's what this that's what this material is for is to to make sure that any kind of questions that you have or uh, concerns or thoughts or doubts or or anything that you may be um because everything's covered in this in this material so so let's finish reading this so so what do we do keep on sinning so god can keep on forgiving i should hope not if we've left the country where sin is sovereign where it's 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 allowed how can we still live in our old house house there we we can't or do you realize we packed up and left there for good you know we we have to leave the old man leave the old ways leave the old uh relationships leave the old uh, connections leave leave the old habits leave the old um uh places that we used to visit or um that we used to, to go to or music um television videos uh movies you know who everything has to become new when you when you get baptized you don't you don't just go and you just go to church and just say oh i give my life to the lord and you feel good and you want and you want friends and you want friends new friends that are that are serving god but you're not willing to surrender your life to god you, you, you want to still dibble dabble in in the world it doesn't work that way you're you're setting yourself up for a fall you could go ahead and try it but the bible says that your sin will find you out and and from experience it will so you want to make sure that when you make the choice to, to repent and get baptized, that you're you're truly surrendering all that you have, mind, body, soul, spirit, the whole shmeel, giving your life to God, um, and allowing the Holy Spirit to to reign, and, and not your flesh. The flesh wants to reign, and we have to put into subjection the flesh by the Holy Spirit. By pulling down strongholds, casting out vain imaginations, giving giving our mind over to God, and, and 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 taking it out of the subjection and authority of of the world, because you, we spent so many years teaching our minds how to do things our way and how how to experience life, um, you know how, how to have. You know, there are certain things that we've done and we've learned since we were young to get things that we want, um, and, and and we've gone about it the wrong way. So that's we have to come out of agreement with those old ways. We have to come out of agreement with those old patterns and habits and things that have caused uh, not only us to stumble and fall and, and and have problems, but those around us who who know that we're serving the Lord. Um, and they see that we're doing those things and it stumbles them and then that that makes your testimony and your stumbling and your sinning being a Christian is going to cause others not to want to come into Christ because they see that you're just being a hypocrite and, and we can't be hypocrites we have to this is this is this is not this is not a joke it's like I finished I felt the Holy Spirit gave me that revelation that when we get uh, when we repent and get baptized and get filled with the Holy Spirit, he, he, he gives us a gift. It's a gift. He gives it to us, this Holy Spirit. And it's not a gift. We, the Bible says that we have to be, um, become new creations. 
And the new creation doesn't play with the Holy Spirit. We don't play with our gifts. We don't play with the gifts that God gives us. They're not to play, open up, and play with like little kids, play with their toys. We have to, we have to, the gifts are very, very um, personal. We have to, the gifts are not for us, they're for other people. So we have to learn how to overcome with the gifts, how to administer the gifts, how to administer the grace of God. It's the grace of God is, is a gift that is the best, is the best gift of all that God has given us that we cannot pay for. We can't pay for the gift of, of grace, for his blood. It's a free gift, and that's what he's saying here. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Um, the Bible says here that, uh, or didn't you realize we packed up and left there for good? That is what happened in baptism, right? So in baptism, we have to understand that when we're getting baptized, when you get baptized, you're, you're putting to death the old man, the old woman, uh, everything. You're putting to death. You're dying to self. And you're, and you're putting your trust 100% in God and his people and, and that they're going to help you. They're going to help you through it. You're going gonna, to you're gonna, you're gonna allow them to teach you. You're going to allow them to encourage you. You're going to allow them to rebuke you if they have to and, and, and love. And they're going to have to help them and uh strengthen you and pray for you and you're going to have to go through receiving you're going to have to go through receiving the receiving end first before you could be administering you have to go through the receiving before you can go before you can go to the shipping before you can go into the shipping department you have to be in the receiving department like for those of you who have done warehouse work you have to be you have to start in the receiving receiving department first and receive and then after you've you, after you've mastered the receiving department, then then you could graduate and go to the to the to the shipping department, if that makes sense. Um, so that's what happens at baptism. When when we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came up out of the water, we entered into the new country of grace. Amen. A, a new life in a new land. Yes. Uh, that's what ha that's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. Uh, it means a, a new life in a new land. When we are lowered into the water, it is like the burial of Jesus. When we are raised up out of the water, it's like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a light-filled world by our Father so that we can see where we're going in our new grace sovereign country. That makes so total sense. Um, could it be any clearer? <laughs> Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ, a dis decisive end to that sin, miserable life, no longer captive to sin's demands. What we believe is this. If we get included in Christ's sin conquer conquering death, we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. Never again will death have the last word. We are new creations set apart uh, and created before the foundation of the world to stand holy and blameless before him in love. Um, when Jesus died, he took sin down with him. When G when he... when Jesus died, he took sin down with him, but alive he brings God down to us. So now he brings God down to us. He gives us the ability to, to be new creations in Christ. From now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. Again, sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue and you hang on every word. God speaks your mother tongue and you hang on every word. So don't allow anybody to speak into your life that, uh, that are, are negative. Don't allow anybody to tell you who, you, who, you're, who, you, who, you're, who you're not. Quit allowing people to speak into your life that are not encouraging and helping you better your life in the Lord. The Bible says, says here, you are dead to sin and alive to God. So when you get baptized, you are dead to sin. Sin no longer has dominion over you. You are a new creation, and that's what Jesus did. That means you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your lives. 
Again, you, it means you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your lives. Don't give it the time of day. Don't give it a time of day. Just like I did this video the other day that sin is disguised as a solicitor. He, he, the solicitor, whatever it's trying to solicit you, a thought or a sin or whatever it is that that's speaking to you that's not aligned with God, it's trying to solicit you so that you buy it, so that you grab it, so that you receive it. And, and that's what this is talking about. When we get baptized, we... We're already trained before we get baptized. We're supposed to be, and that's what the, that's what this lessons that these lessons are about is to train you to to prepare you to ready 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 readily prepare you for a greater work that's about to take place. So, so we're gonna keep reading. So don't even run little errands that are connected with that old way of life. So it says, don't even run little errands that are connected with that way old way of life. So, like, for me, I won't even go into a liquor store, um, say, if I need a water or something. Um, even if I need a water, I won't even go to a liquor store. I'll go to another, or somewhere else where they don't serve liquor, because I used to struggle with, with alcohol. It's not because I feel like alcohol, I'm powerless over alcohol. That's not why I do it. I do it because I know the grace of God. I don't want to trample the grace of God. I don't want to give nobody an excuse or a reason to say, hey... I saw a Baya in the liquor store. What was he doing in there? You know, even if I was there for a glass of water, you wouldn't want to give the enemy not even a tiny little bit foothold. And that's what that's what being a, a new creation and being born again. And get, when you get baptized, th then you start pulling. Instead of pulling on the old ways, your old ways and habits, you start pulling on the blood. You start pulling on the grace. You start pulling on the favor of God. And you start know, you know how to use your gifts and know how to use. Um, the power that's that's been given to us from on high. The Bible says, "Throw yourselves wholeheartedly and full time. Remember, you've been raised from the dead. So throw yourselves wholeheartedly and full time. Remember, you've been raised from the dead. So when you get baptized, you're raised from the dead. You're <laughs> literally you're raised from the dead. You're a new creation. You, you're your old man's dead." Um, you shouldn't be going from you shouldn't be going two foot forward and four steps back two foot forward and three steps back you should you should be going forward or forward or forward um in the lord so and then the only reason why you're not you're not going forward in the lord and you're going two foot forward and, and one step back or three foot forward and two steps back is because there's cracks in your foundation and that's what this material is for is to help teach you how to I, I don't, and I'm not going to stop saying it because it's we need to hear it. Even me, I need to hear it. I'm going to keep saying it because I'm, 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 I'm putting it in my mind. I'm letting the word of God transforming my mind, and I'm, I'm hearing myself talk, and it sounds redundant, and it sounds it's aggravating even to my flesh. I didn't want to hear myself keep saying it, but I keep saying it anyways because it's, it's doing something in my heart. It's doing something in my mind, and, and hopefully it's doing something to help you guys too that are listening. Um, it says, into God's way of doing things, sin cannot tell you how to live. We do not allow sin to tell us how to live. And that's what the solicitor does. He wants to come and solicit us and tell us what to do, what not to do, how to say it, how not to say it, when to say it, and this and that. And we don't listen to the devil. We don't listen to the demons. They're going to be talking to you. They're not going to stop talking. They're always going to talk to you no matter how much you know the Lord, the, the demons will always sit. They always they always come around, try to try to trip you up, and try to get you to to, to to take take the bait, and we don't do it um, because because the blood speaks greater things. After all, it says you're not living under that old tranny. Or, I'm sorry, tranny. After all, you're not living under that old tyranny any longer. Um, that, and it was it was tyranny. Um, it was tyranny, and and. Uh, it's, it's just it's not a good lifestyle it says you're living in the freedom of God amen um, it says what is true freedom since so since we're out from under the old tyranny does that mean we can live any any old way we want so I say so since we're out from the old tyranny does that mean we can live any way we want since we're free in the freedom of God can we do anything that comes to mind it says hardly <laughs> hardly no you know 
well enough from your own experience that there are some acts of so-called freedom that destroy freedom. It's so good. Offer yourselves to sin, for instance, and it's your last free act. And that's the truth. But offer yourselves to the ways of God, and the freedom never quits. All your lives, you've let sin tell you what to do. All your lives, you've let sin tell you what to do. That's accepting the bait from the solicitor. The devil wants to solicit you and take you out, and we don't let him. But thank God you've started listening to a new master. Amen. One whose commands set you free to live openly in his freedom. It says, I'm using this freedom, verse 19, freedom language because it's easy to picture. You can readily recall, can't you, how at one time, the more you did just what you felt like doing, not caring about others, not caring about God, the worse your life became and the less freedom you had. And how much different is it now as you live in God's freedom, your lives healed and expansive, in holiness as verse 21 as long as you did what you felt like doing ignoring God you didn't have to bother with right thinking or right living or right anything for that matter matter but do you call that a free life what did you get out of it nothing you're proud of now where did it get you a dead end but now that you found net but now that you found you don't have to listen to sin tell you what to do and have dis discovered the delight of listening to God telling you what a surprise. A whole healed, put together life right now with more and more of life on the way. Work hard for sin your whole life and your pension is death. Again, work hard for sin your whole life and your pension is death. But God's gift is real life, eternal life delivered by Jesus our master so that that is um, about what he's talking about here on the left uh, if we if we go back over to the left um, to over here we're saying uh, remember this is not a lecture but a way to find out how far a person has come in their understanding of their new experience of Christ and to guide them into blessings such as the Lord's Supper water baptism and witnessing um, so, and then witnessing is another thing too, like what we just talked about. We want to make sure that when we're witnessing for God, that we're actually living that lifestyle out and we're not, we're not being hypocrites and we're, you know, you, we can't work for our salvation. You can't go out and win enough souls to, to save your life. You can't do it. It's, it's just not, it ain't, it's not, it, a lot of people think they can, but it's you, like, like, like the grace of God is, it's a gift and, and it's not to be trampled on. Um, you know, the only thing that's to be trampled on is snakes and scorpions, and uh, and we do that by by remaining in Christ and knowing how to um, how to uh, how to use our the gifts, how to use the authority of Christ. So, with that being said, um, I think what I'm going to do is let me see. Am I going to do that? So here's the contents. Um, so yeah, with that being said, that this is going to be the first, um, the first. I'm just going to use this video. I'm going to actually use this video as, um, uh, as an introduction to, uh, Believers Bible Class, um, Class One. I'll, I'll title it, um, Session One, Class One. I guess so. Um, you guys will know that this is the very first video from this teaching from this discipleship manual titled Believer's Bible Class, which I require, which I would suggest everybody that comes in, into contact with this video, you would listen to, and you would continue to listen to these videos, because this is the third time I've taught these videos, taught these this discipleship material, and each time I teach it, it just it, it encourages me, and it builds me up in the faith, and, um, and I know that it will do the same to you if you guys allow it. So with that being said, um, until the next video, may God blessly or may God richly bless you guys as you continue to remain in Him, remain in the vine, remain true to the um, to the one and only uh, living God um, who loves you, who um, who died on the cross, sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins, 
so that you could be free, like we just read in Romans 6. Um, you know, we can do this, you guys. Let's, let's, let's come together in the unity of Christ and set our differences aside, and let's love God and love others. In Jesus' name, amen.